What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be talking about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade for this upcoming week, the third week of March in 2019. And we're also going to be talking about some that you guys called out to me via Instagram, via Discord, through the call out section, or on the DM section on Discord as well. So before we do get into all of these topics of today's video, for everybody out there that doesn't know who I am, my name is Stas and I make videos here on YouTube dealing with trading in the stock market, investing in the stock market, mostly swing trading, day trading, and long-term investing. If you're interested in that, feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want to see further videos from me and if you want to join our community, if you do enjoy what you see in this video feel free to do so. There's two links down below in the description box, one being the free Discord and the other one being the free Facebook group. Again, 100% free, very good resources in there. You'll be able to talk to a bunch of other investors and traders and get a ton, a ton of value. I promise you that. And without further ado, guys, let me take a sip of my peach tea monster here. This is probably my favorite flavor right now. For those of you guys that don't know, I'm a big, big monster and Chipotle guy. And right now, I'm drinking a monster. So let's talk about what stocks and ETFs I'm personally watching here over these next couple of days. And then I have a list here on my notes with some that you guys ended up calling out and some other ones in there that I personally want to trade as well and that I want to talk about, you know, that I came up with. So let's start off here with uh, NVIDIA, the chip company, NVIDIA. We all know they had an acquisition last week, I believe, of about six or seven billion dollars. And if we look here on the the live news tab and this is something interesting on thinkorswim for those of you guys that don't know or you're more um, new to think or swim there's a bunch of different side tabs here that you can play with one being the live news sure it's not as good as some other sources but if you're on think or swim and you want to see whatever's going on with that particular company, in this case, NVIDIA, you can go here, live news, and you can see some of the top things being said, right? You can see, you know, S&P 500 posts 2.9% gain, yada, yada, yada. And then you can see that acquisition that I'm talking about here. I believe it was Mellanox. They outbid Intel for Mellanox, and this actually pumped up the stock about 8% on this particular day here from about 147, I believe, up to about 160. And we did talk about this one in Friday's video, but for those of you guys that didn't catch Friday's video, I'm just going to go over this stock as well um, in this video and tell you guys why I see potential in it. So we all know the chip stocks and a lot of the stocks out there in the stock market were getting crushed from October to December, especially NVIDIA here. We see it was nearly 300 Hundred dollars per share, guys, and this stock nosedived from 292 all the way down to 125. So it lost half of its value and some, right? We notice. Let's see, you know, this is not, this is probably about an 125% loss in terms of NVIDIA stock. And then what do we notice here, guys? It was not getting rejected by the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA, you know, any longer like it was over the previous months. We got that double bottom, which is a very good potential reversal sign to the upside for any stock ETF future index that we're doing our analysis on. And from there, we ended up breaking out of the resistance of the 50 SMA and eventually breaking out of the 180 SMA, both two resistances that we were getting rejected by over the previous month. So we got the double bottom. We got the break out of the two critical resistances, right? These are signs that we're reversing to the upside. Everything's looking good, right? We got the, the pull or the push up rather, the pullback for a higher low, meaning the uptrend pattern is beginning or rather, should I say, continuing. And then we got the pullback. We got the break above the simple moving averages again. And we've been continuing pushing up in terms of NVIDIA stock. And right now we notice we're at a portion of the pattern where we're at a resistance at about 170, 171 from about 
the beginning of December when we dropped from 172 down to 124. That obviously made the 172 level right where we are right now a resistance once we broke below that level. And now we're testing that level again. So we notice NVIDIA is a bit overbought here. And we are at a resistance. So there's a couple of things that I'm looking to happen here. One, are we going to break out of this resistance to trend up to the next resistance, which in this case is at about $171, which was a previous support back in the end of October to the beginning of November? Or... Are we going to get rejected here? Are we going to see a healthy pullback, which I think is very possible over this next week, to the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA support areas where we did end up holding and bouncing above over the previous couple of pullbacks, right? We noticed this pullback here back in the beginning of February. We pulled back and held nicely on those moving averages, popped up, continued the uptrend, right? We noticed a little pullback here. We dipped a little bit below, but held the general general area, you know, around those moving averages as well. And now we're popping up to the higher high. Are we going to pull back and hold, you know, a mutual, um, you know, uh, uh, a moving average support here, right? I'm looking at that for a potential entry on NVIDIA. So there's definitely two different scenarios here. Like I said, the pop up here, if we continue to run up, or the pullback, which would open up a, a pretty sweet entry, in my opinion, as a swing trade on NVIDIA. So those are a couple things I'm watching here in terms of the stock. Very, very attractive right now, in my opinion, especially with this massive margin of profit that it does have to offer here over the next couple of weeks and months if we do continue to uptrend, right? Let's say... We see a uh, you know a steep decline here. We see a break below this red trend that I'm showing you guys here that I have drawn out. That's going to be a huge break of pattern to the downside. We could potentially see some more bearish signs from there. But since Nvidia has gotten so beaten up over these past couple of months, you know I see more potential upside here than more potential downside right the, the, you know if we do end up getting down to these levels um you know that's going to be pretty scary and dangerous for the stock and i'm not really going to be looking to trade it at that point right so that's nvidia Another one I want to talk about today, which I did talk about in Friday's video, if you guys did see this, and this is a little bit of a repeat, I'm sorry, but we didn't get too many people to watch that video, so I do want to get um, you know, more eyes on these charts here, because these videos on Sundays, they, 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 they typically do get um, more views. So just like NVIDIA, right, we see that chip company got slaughtered. Qualcomm is also one that got slaughtered as well, right? We noticed over the past couple of months, you know, the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA here on the 184 hour chart, these two levels have been acting as resistances, right? Very, very, very clear here. And then we found our bottom at about $49, which if we look on these longer term charts, that ended up being a support stemming back from a couple years ago, right? Back in 2016, we held that level. Back in 2017, we did. Back in 2018, we did and now we're seeing another bounce at that level here and for those of you guys that don't know chip companies are cyclical right they're cyclical they have time periods where they're doing very well other time periods where they're selling off right so this could be an area a point in time where we're going to be headed back up in Qualcomm am I saying that 100% absolutely not right you have to do your research you have to understand these stocks for yourself I'm just here to do the technical breakdown to provide you guys some further insight so we see that on the longer term charts and now we're finally seeing the break out of the resistance levels like I said of the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA here on the longer term chart we're also noticing a bullish cross here over the past two weeks which means the 50 simple moving average is crossing above the 180 day simple moving average which we all know is a bullish cross meaning there could be some more potential green and there could be a lot more potential green here you know when we do see a cross like that but similar to nvidia i want to see a pullback here in qualcomm stock and a test again a retest on the 50 sma as a support level so notice here you know every time qualcomm has pushed 
to a higher high in its uptrend pattern. It's pulled back and tested that 50 SMA support. And now we popped up to the next higher high here, the continuation of the uptrend. And we're noticing a little red candlestick here after market hours starting to form. So we could potentially see something like this go down where we pull back down maybe to 55, maybe to 55.50 before we continue to push up, right? Just take a look at this, um, you know, at these trend lines I just drew. This could be a potential pattern for Qualcomm, a little pullback and a little boost up for the continuation. That is what I'm looking at. But let's say we pull back and we break the 50 SMA support here. That's not going to be too good of a sign, and I'm probably going to scrap Qualcomm and not even trade it if we do end up seeing that occur. So that's Qualcomm here, guys. That's NVIDIA. Two of the top stocks I'm watching, so I might as well just erase them off of my list here. And uh, let's start talking about some of these other ones that I do have here that I personally see potential in and that you guys ended up shouting out to me starting off with EA um, Electronics Arts Electronic Arts however uh, you say that I'm pretty sure it's Electronic Arts and uh, this is a video game um, company right we all know this company just like NVIDIA and Qualcomm, this one got slaughtered as well, just like many other stocks out there, guys. You know, $150 per share down to about $73 per share. It lost half of its value. And from there, we noticed a little double bottom here over the course of about a month and a half at $73. The next one at about $73 as well. That is a good sign that we're reversing to the upside, more potential push to the green, right? We got that earnings report, I believe, this uh, this time period. Remember when we were talking about it in those videos a couple months back? The stock tanked from about 91 to 77, and it filled the gap perfectly. And now we got rejected by the resistance, which is a good sign that we're continuing the uptrend and just simply pulling back here. And now we're holding the old resistance at $91 as a new support level, right? We can notice that if I draw out or extend rather this trend line, we can see exactly what I'm talking about. And this is a good sign that EA is maintaining this level as a new high, and it wants to push up and retest the 105 ish dollar level, which in this case is the next resistance. So this is a very, very good sign. Actually, EA is looking super attractive, and I'm going to watch it or put it here rather on my active watch list. And let me just break it down a little bit further for you guys, right? We noticed that it broke up the resistance. It's holding it as a new support. And now we're trending in this horizontal channel here, guys. Very, very simple, right? It's like we leveled up, we popped out of that level, and now we're just maintaining this new level looking to pop up even further to the 107 level. So I definitely see potential this week, especially since we're now above this 50 simple moving average. This is also another very important thing here. We noticed the pullback towards the end of February, and we noticed that this time period here, we were getting rejected by the 50 simple moving average. It was acting as a resistance. And now on the 7th of March, we got that nice big pump, this big green candlestick where we broke out of that resistance and now we're treating it as a new support. And this was actually also a higher low from the previous, meaning that on a smaller scale basis here, we're hiring up, we're making higher lows and we're looking to continue to push up. So as long as this... 50 SMA is acting as a support here. I do see potential in EA pushing up to 105, testing this next resistance here. If I do drag it out, you guys will be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. So EA stock, I'm watching that one very closely this week. It's looking very good. So CVS is one that a lot of people wanted me to talk about. And I know I actually looked at CVS last week and I didn't really like what I was seeing. And we can see... Based on this chart here, CVS is on a clear downtrend pattern. The moving averages are all pointing down. They're all signaling bearish 
moves, right? They're all signaling bearish sentiment here. And by that, I mean the 180 SMA is pointing down. The 50 SMA is pointing down. We're making lower lows, lower highs. Everything is pointing to downwards movement in terms of CVS. We notice the double top here, which is a bearish move. We can expect bearish downside if we see a double top in a stock. Just like when we see a double bottom, we can expect bullish moves, right? A double top expects downside moves. So we notice ever since we got that double top, 50 SMA, 180 SMA, both of those have been uh, resistance points. We tried fighting them, got rejected, tried popping above it here, got massively rejected after that earnings report here on, uh, you know, the middle of February of 2019. And just this past week, guys, it's looking like we're getting rejected by the 50 SMA with potential of dropping even further now if we do end up fully breaking, fully pushing back down into the low $50 level. So in terms of CVS right now, you know, it's not showing any signs of an uptrend. It's not showing any signs, excuse me, of a reversal to the upside. So I really would not touch it, right? We're noticing the bearish cross of the 50 SMA below the 180 SMA. It's really not looking too good right now in terms of CVS. For me to even consider trading it, guys, at this point, I would need to see a clear move up at least past this uh, next resistance at about 58. And from there, we could potentially fill the gap up to the 180 SMA resistance. But still, that is risky, and at least in my opinion, because I'm trading, if I were to trade this, I'm trading a stock that's downtrending, right? I would be trading a stock that's downtrending, trying to fill the gap back up to the moving average resistance. That is kind of uh, not my style, I would say, right? And I would typically stay away from that. If I wanted to get into a trade, I would need at least at this point, like I said, a break out of $58, but that's still not enough in my opinion. I would need a break out of this 180 SMA and 50 SMA resistance. You know, that's what I would ultimately need in terms of CVS stock. So DGAS, let's talk about DGAS very quickly, guys. DGAS is a natural gas ETF. I'm sure you all know that by now. It trades based upon the natural gas futures. Whenever natural gas is going up, DGAS is going down. But whenever natural gas is selling off, DGAS is going up in price. So take a look here at natural gas and look what we're, uh, you know, let me just show you guys what I'm looking at. So if we go here to the 30-day, 90-minute, we'll be able to see this on a nicer basis here. So we've been talking about this channel that natural gas has been trading within over the past month or so at this point, right? From about 275-ish up to about 290. This is where natural gas has been playing around, you know, over these past couple of weeks. And now we're actually noticing a another resistance here within this little channel at about $2.85, <clears throat> where we noticed that we got rejected this past week. We had a couple of tries to break out of that point here on the 13th of March, the 14th of March, the 15th of March, and we did not get out of that level. And on a micro scale here on this 30-day chart, we're honestly seeing a break below the support levels of the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA. So at this point, guys, natural gas is looking a bit bearish on this time frame of a chart here. So the next chart, or rather the next level I'm looking at it to test here is going to be about 277. So we could potentially get another uh, little sell-off here, and these futures open up at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So at the time you're watching, this video you'll be able to see what natural gas is doing right go to natural gas take a look what is going on now is it going to be trending to the lower parts here of 270 if it does if it starts to trend you know into the low 270s that's going to be super super bearish right that's going to mean that we could potentially break out of this channel which would open up a huge margin of profit on d gas because again whenever natural gas is selling off d gas is going up so just keep an eye 
on that level, guys, right here, if it, if it bounces and holds 277 and we slowly start to go back up, this could be the channel we're trading in. And let's say at that point, you guys could be a potential play, which is a bull ETF that goes up when natural gas goes up. So as of right now, D gas, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag here. You know, anything can really happen at this point. And it's not at a level where I'm screaming, or rather, it's screaming to me that it's super, super attractive, right? At this point, I'm probably just going to be on the sidelines waiting to see, you know, what direction natural gas picks to go. If we pick this way, obviously, D gas is going to be a very good play. Let's say if we bounce at this level, slowly start to go back up into the 280s, maybe the mid 280s. 290s obviously at that point you guys is going to be the better play just keep an eye on the technicals here what are we going to be doing very very important so acb guys aurora cannabis this has been the chatter the talk of the stock market community here over the past week or so because we all saw acb guys had a 13, 14% day, I believe, this day from about $8 up to about $9 here. Absolutely amazing day. And at this point, we're looking like we're holding the resistance at $9. Well, we're clearly holding it now. It's confirmed as a new support level, right? We were talking about in the channel, uh, on, this, on the YouTube channel, a couple of videos ago that if ACB breaks 822 it could fill up to nine dollars and that's exactly what ended up happening and i was saying that if we break above nine dollars and hold it as a new support which is looking like we're doing that as well based on the past two three trading days we can see we held that level as a new support you know we could potentially be testing the ten dollar level and ultimately you know, all-time highs here in ACB, which at this point, are those the all-time highs? I don't want to uh, misguide you guys. Yeah, I figured they were the all-time highs at about $12.50, right? So at this point, you know, ACB, a ton of hype behind it. We saw, I believe it was a billionaire investor either took a stake in ACB. He was talking about potentially investing in ACB, which is obviously something huge and especially uh, especially in a developing industry like the marijuana industry, especially in small companies like these marijuana stocks. If a billionaire comes in, let's say he buys the stock, which would be crazy. He says he's going to invest in the stock or an analyst comes and upgrades it to a buy or something like that. That's absolutely huge for companies like ACB that are smaller companies, right? Very, very huge. So ACB at this point, you know, we saw Cron do it. We saw Cron run a crap ton over the past couple of weeks. Now, you know, although ACB has run a crap ton as well, it may be it may be ACB's turn to go on an even more insane run like Cron did over that over that month span where it nearly doubled in price, right? So ACB at this point, guys. You know, it is a bit overbought on a technical basis. I would love to see a retest at about 9.20 to 9.30. That would be the ideal situation before hopping in for a potential swing trade. But I understand that might not happen due to the hype here. We might continue to run up. And at that point, it would be a little bit risky to try and get in and ride the wave to the upside because we wouldn't be getting in on a dip if we were to continue to run up. And at that point, it's kind of a risk that are you willing to take that? Are you willing to, you know, ride that wave, not getting in at a dip, not getting in at, a, at the best opportunity, you know, on a dip? That's up to you guys, right? So I'm going to be watching this one. I think it's very, very solid. And, you know, I always keep an eye on the marijuana stocks, um, you know, anyway here. And, uh, you know, that's just something I always, always do. So let's just take a look at the notes here again. UWT, we talked about UWT you know, pretty closely here, um, you know, over the past couple of uh, videos. And UWT is an oil-based ETF. And I'm not going to go over this one too in-depth because we talk about this in every single video. But for those of you guys that don't know, it trades based upon crude oil. It goes up in price whenever crude oil is going up in price as well. And we saw a move in crude oil this past week that broke us out of the 57.50 resistance. And now we're looking to hold it as a new support level and fill up to the next uh, resistance here at about $61. So keep an eye 
for that pump up here, that move up to $61, which would open up a ton of margin of profit on, excuse me again, UWT, right? If crude oil bumps up, to the 60 level, 61 level, that's going to be pushing up UWT along with it. And at this point, UWT has a lot of room, you know, to the upside because we all know crude oil got slaughtered, UWT got slaughtered, and now we're reversing. So there is a bunch of moves, uh, you know, upside potential here in terms of UWT. So SFM, this is one that I got called out in the uh, Discord uh, message group here. Let's see what this is looking like. So Sprouts Farmers Markets, Inc. I don't know this company, to be completely honest with you, but this is looking like the CVS chart, right? This one is downtrending, which is something that I don't like in, with my trading strategy. I like trading in stocks that have formed a uptrend reversal of the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA on the longer term chart. You know, further upside established at this point, you know, SFM. We noticed the bearish cross here, the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA, which signals further bearish downside. We noticed that these simple moving averages, they're still acting as resistance levels. But, you know, this could be a potential play here if we do end up filling back up to the resistance level uh, at the 180 SMA, right? If we do something like this, you know, because just take a look at this, guys. Take a look at SFM. Every time, from what I'm seeing here, every time over the past couple of weeks, or rather months at this point, every time we've pushed down to a low, we've rebounded a couple of days or a couple of weeks back up to the moving average, right? We pushed down, rebounded, pushed down, rebounded here. So is this another opportunity where we push down and then we rebound back up to the 180 SMA? That could be a potential play here. But again, I don't like trading stocks that are downtrending, even though they offer a rebound play, right? This could be a rebound back up from, let's say, 22.50 up to $24, which does offer 6%. But we could also be headed down to $20, which at this point is the support level, the next support level we could be going to, which is about 4 or 5% away. So unless we get a nice pump up this way, uh, this week coming up for a potential fill to the upside, or we even get out of this over the next couple of weeks out of the 180 SMA, I'm not really interested in trading SFM. But if you're into trading downward stocks for fills up to the moving average resistances, you know, that could be a potential move for you. So TVIX, let's talk about this one very quickly, guys. It's an ETF that goes up whenever the markets are selling off. So let's say we do get a pullback in the markets this week like I talked about on Friday's video. For those of you guys that didn't see Friday's video, I went into a deeper in-depth market overview, market analysis from the past week. So go check out that video um, you know, after this one if you're interested. But we talked about how the SPX, every time it pumps up to a high, we see a little pullback. We see a little bit of a retracement, right? We saw a 3% pullback this past you know, two weeks when we popped to that high. And now I'm going to be seeing if we're going to do the same thing, right? Are we going to pop up, maybe have a green day on Monday and then see a little retracement, which would offer, you know, a nice little potential for profit on uh, TVIX. Because remember, whenever the markets are selling off, TVIX is going up. So I'm keeping an eye on TVIX for the potential market sell-off. And Apple is another one I'm watching, although Apple is one that I'm actually waiting for a pullback on before entering. So we talked about this one in last week's video. It ended up playing out perfectly from 175 up to 185, that resistance. Now, are we going to get rejected here, pull back, hold the 50 SMA as a support to continue the uptrend and then fill back up to this resistance? Or are we going to break out and go to the next resistance? resistance, which is at 195, which is probably a little bit out of uh, the realm here, out of possibility, because we do notice that we're extremely overbought, but never say never, guys, that could potentially happen, but I'm leaning more towards a little pullback in Apple due to the, you know, due to the big, big move that we saw from this low at 170 just about nine days ago, right? Nine days, guys, the stock has gone up $15 a share, you know, 
I'd be a little bit cautious there, but I still see a lot of potential in Apple because it is on a reversal uptrend right now. And we are at a point where, where we can pull back and get a better entry point. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of Apple, guys. JNUG and JDST, these are the last two that I want to talk about. And these are at levels right now. Um, and for those of you guys that don't know, they trade based upon the gold futures. And the gold futures and these inverse ETFs, they're at levels right now where they can really go either way. And let me explain that very quickly. We notice here on the 184-hour chart, you know, the gold futures have taken a huge pullback from 1350 down to about 1280. And it seems like we found the bottom here, right? It seems like we found the bottom at this support level, roughly at about 1280. And from there, it's looking like we're making higher lows, breaking above the 50 SMA. And it's looking like we're reversing to the upside. But we're also seeing some resistance at the 180 SMA here, which is why I'm saying this can really go either way. Are we going to get fully rejected here on Monday? And of course, the futures markets open up at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we'll be able to see these. Are we going to get rejected here and push to the downside where JDST is going to be the better play? Or... Are we going to fully confirm that push to the higher high off this bounce on the 50 SMA and the break above the 180 SMA, which would be a very bullish move where we could potentially play JNUG. So keep an eye on these futures, guys. Again, when this video is up, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about here. Notice and keep an eye on where we're headed. Are we going up here? Are we going down? These are going to be huge, huge um, patterns that you guys have to keep an eye on. And notice here on a smaller term basis, this could be a head and shoulders forming, right? We could be doing something like this, right? Shoulder, head, shoulder, which we could sell off even more. Or we can be doing something like this where we you know, push out of that resistance and do something like that, right? These are possibilities. These are two scenarios that could potentially end up happening. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to end off, uh, end, up, end up ending it off here. If you guys did enjoy the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys are trading this week. What are you watching? I would love to know. And if you're new to the channel, again, Make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'm doing videos every single day on market updates, trading updates. There's going to be personal finance videos. There's a bunch of videos like that and trading tips along the way, long-term investing tips along the way. If you guys are into that, I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching again. Peace out.